Yo, what's going on? It's Brian from the Backspace Nomads. Today on the channel, we're getting into our review of the indie run and gun called Cuphead. It's picked up a massive amount of attention from the gaming community for its visuals and its difficulty. And by the end of the review, I hope to give you enough information so you can make a decision on if you should buy or skip this game. If you dig this review and want to give it a thumbs up, I appreciate it. If you'd like more of the content on Backspace Nomads and decide to subscribe to us, thank you. It means a lot to us. This is Cuphead, and here's my review. Cuphead was released by Studio MDHR on September 29th. You can find it on the Xbox and the PC for a price point of $19.99. How do the developers describe the game that they made? Quote, Cuphead is a classic run-and-gun action game heavily focused on boss battles. Inspired by cartoons of the 1930s, the visuals and audio are painstakingly created with the same techniques of the era, i.e. traditional hand-drawn cell animation, watercolor backgrounds, and original jazz recordings. Play as Cuphead or Mugman as you traverse strange worlds, acquire new weapons, learn powerful super moves, and discover hidden secrets while you try to pay your debt back to the devil. End quote. I would agree with all this. This is a run and gun. It has a lot of similarities to games like Contra and Metal Slug, with difficulty levels being ramped up to something close to a Karuga. And they do it all while putting you back in the 1930s cartoons and at times you're confused in the mind of thinking you might actually be watching one and not playing it. With that, let's start our first category, graphics. When I think about indie games, I think about them more as a genre rather than just a business model. And the one aspect that ties all these wildly different games together is their ability to take risks artistically. Thinking back to the old indie games, I always remember how eye-catching they were because of how different they are trying to be from anything else in the games industry. Now that that uniqueness of look has kind of lost its charm just a little bit that it once carried with me, and then a game like Cuphead comes out, and I'm completely blown away and obsessed with a game's art all over again. Cuphead rightly boasts that everything that you're playing in their game feels like it was created with old school methods from the 1930s, because it was. Every frame is hand-drawn, animated with cell shading like you would see from an old Disney or Warner Brother cartoon. This game looks like Steamboat Willie or some old Looney Tunes episode. It's amazing. The love that was put into this game can be felt in every corner that you play in, and it's beautiful. Not only does Studio MDHR capture the look and era, they also capture the tone. The minions and the bosses you find yourself fighting against, they all have this sinister look that makes you feel slightly uncomfortable wondering how and why people ever made these things for kids. I cannot sing the praises of the graphics in this game enough. The developers had a vision for the game, and they did nothing but succeed in fully realizing that vision. It's extremely impressive, and largely why everyone seems to know about this game. Let's move on. Sound. A great slam and then sound. The sound of this game has so much to do with why this game feels so authentically set in a different era. This easily could have been an aspect of the game design that destroyed the world that they were trying to put you in, but MDHR really has outdone themselves here. Everything in this game sounds like video games were invented in the 1930s, and you're just playing a port of some game that your grandpa told you about. The music alone is so goddamn good. Every track that this game plays has some really good jazz going on. Everything's upbeat, and it never grows tiresome even after you're trying a level for the 15th or 45th time. Sound effects come across as super satisfying. For the majority of levels, you're just holding down your fire button to keep up with what's being thrown at you, and even here, the developer found the right balance of communicating with you on what's going on, but having the sounds that never feel like they're stale or infuriating. And I guess infuriating might be the right word to start our next topic. Gameplay. For years, developers have been easing the pressure and challenge of games to appeal to a market they kind of classify as the casual gamer. This trend has led to games that even now allow you to skip a boss fight just to let you continue on with the game. In a small scale, a group of gamers who enjoy a challenge has always existed. But now, standing on the shoulders of Dark Souls, a larger counterculture to that casual gamer movement has grown on the internet and it's fueled by those looking for a bigger payoff. 
Cuphead is the next game in this line to pick up the flag and just have you walk that thin edge of accomplishment and throwing your controller just straight across the room. Let's set aside difficulty for a brief few seconds though, because just to say that this game is difficult or that it should be played on the merits of this challenge alone, just kind of just cutting it short. Everything that this game does mechanically is just so damn smart. While a lot of modern shooters employ a twin stick style of shooting that allows you to shoot any direction from anywhere, Cuphead will, will only allow you to shoot in eight directions, up, down, left, right, and then the 45 degree angles in between. This choice in mechanics limits the player and increases how difficult it is to kill the things that need killing. Your choice of where to position will determine how successful you are in this game, and it just adds an extra layer of depth to it. Creativity in monsters and bosses you face is just simply incredible. It's been a long time since I played an indie game that was so fully realized within its own world. From frightening potatoes and birds that are too big for their own birdhouses, dragons that will actually devour hours of your real life, Cuphead is impressive in its game design and just how creatively they establish new mechanics for the players to deal with. Every time I got to a new phase of a boss, I was just excited to find out what this boss was actually going to throw at me. Now let's talk about the tale that Cuphead weaves. Story. It's an absolute joy to have the story of Cuphead told to you. The game feels as if it was written by some old timer who made the Disney cartoons from their golden era. Feeling ever so lucky, Cuphead and Mugman get into a soul debt with the devil at his casino. The only way for them to repay and save themselves is to go and collect the debt of others. The plot is simple, it's mischievous, it's just a lot of fun. Every character is made to hilariously fit in with each other and the world that they find themselves in. Cuphead and his brother Mugman are the grandsons of Elder Kettle, a, a well he's a tea kettle. Uh, King Dice works at the casino and he has a large dice for a head. And then there's Baroness Von Bonbon, who just rides a gigantic candy castle and shoots a cotton candy shotgun. It's all just spot on and it never gets old. Let's move on to our last category. Replayability. I've played a lot of games recently that I just don't feel like I want to go back and pick up and play again after I've beaten them. But that's just not the same for Cuphead. Every boss fight and level in this game comes with a report card once you beat them. Scoring you in a few different areas of the gameplay, you are given a final grade from F to A. The desire to make your parents proud of you is still present in your life, believe me. Uh, every level that you leave with anything less than an A, well, it just feels disappointing. And all of this would be for nothing if everything before this didn't line up perfectly. The gameplay and the graphics and the sound of this game, they never feel stale. They're never on the verge of repetitive or annoyance. It's amazing how on the 30th time of me trying to beat this goddamn boss who's a dragon, I just, I, I'm, I'm not exhausted by it, and I feel like I can still play the level. Cuphead. I can't say enough good things about this game. I hate to not sound critical of a game, as if I haven't put any thought into if, if there's actually anything wrong with the game, but Cuphead just has me in this weird trance. I'm deeply in love with it and everything it accomplishes. It's just fun, it's refreshing, and it's a game that you absolutely should buy. Thanks for checking out our review of Cuphead. I'll see you Wednesday with the first 15 minutes look at Machine Geek.